Okay, the last two major uh, sections of this are using trigonomic ratios uh, in Pythagorean's theorem to pretty much, you know, solve everything about these tricky triangle combinations and uh, just putting your brain power to use and using these new tools that you've learned to figure out everything about these angles and these line segments um, in a myriad of ways. And the good thing about this is uh, there's not just one way to do it. You can figure out, you can use... Uh, you know, multiple combinations to figure out these uh, different measurements um, and how to solve these problems, uh, crack these codes or these puzzles, if you will. Uh, knowing sine, cosine, tangent, and uh, you know the interior angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees and uh, Pythagorean's theorem. So let's have at it, All right? They're gonna give you the words, right? And of course, like we always do, is we transcribe the words problem onto the uh, the image so that we have a better understanding of what's going on. And I like to color code, right? My x and my y, x is this way, and y would be this way, and then my hypotenuse is will be hypotenuse. I don't know what the plural is. I think it's hypotenuse is right. Is gonna be uh, my orange. So I'll go ahead and start with that. All right, so I have two right triangles here. They say that they're RBK and RBC. RBK and RBC, right, those are right triangles. Right, so I'll go ahead and just write those out as right triangles. All right, so this is a right angle, and this is a right angle. Those are my two right triangles, okay? And of that right triangle, I have these hypotenuse here. This is a hypotenuse. And then this would be the hypotenuse. And then I only have one, I only have one y value. I like to use my y values, I can hardly even see that. I have one y value. Let's make, make it like a marker or something. For, oops, that got ugly. Right, and then I have this, uh, my burgundy is my one Y value. Or my, uh, it could be a short leg or long leg, it doesn't, who knows, right? It might be both for each one of them. Or different for each one of them. Okay, and uh, hardly even see that that's burgundy. Make it thicker. Maybe you can read it better. There, and that's burgundy. Okay, and then I have the green values for both of these. And maybe I know like the entire length of it. Who knows? I don't know what they're giving me yet. I'm just gonna color code this. So that's my x value. Okay. So, and then I have the angle. And you can't hardly even see that on the drawing, on the picture. On the camera, maybe if I brighten it up a little. It's a little bit better, I guess. Okay, and then thicker here okay here we go all right so there's my color-coded sides there and then we have we're gonna call the measure of this uh, let's just see angle B C R we'll call this we're gonna call this one my purple theta or theta 1 theta that's my purple theta I'll call this theta Theta one, right? Or theta, yeah, theta one works. That's fine. And then we'll call R K C. I'm gonna make that like a like a blue theta. Actually, I don't know if you could be able to tell the difference. Blue theta. Yeah, you can tell the difference. That's my blue theta. And I'll call that theta two, just because that's the order that they gave it to me in. That's theta two. Okay, and then RB, RB equals 8. RB equals 8. All right, so how can I figure out the rest of everything else? Okay, well, <coughs> um, and it gives me the measurements for these things, by the way. So theta 1 here is 38.7 degrees. Oh, this is purple. This is 38, 38. 8.7 degrees and 
this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Well, this is cool, right? Because we can figure out this angle, a measure, measure of angle BRK, BRK. It's easy. Measure BRK equals 90 minus 45, which equals 45 degrees. Right, because that's 90, that's 45, so that must be 45. And then the measure measure of angle BRC equals 90 minus 38.7. 90, 90 minus 38.7, and that's going to be equal 51.3. Point three degrees. All right, so we have the other two angles. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we figured this angle out. We figured this angle out. I got those two angles. All right, we still need to figure out the hy both hypotenuse, and we need to figure out both of these legs here. Okay, well, so what function for theta one? We're going to use purple for theta one. What function for theta one uses both this angle and this line segment, right? So this is opposite, and let's figure out the hypotenuse for this one. Well, opposite over hypotenuse is sine, right? So the sine of theta of 38.7, right? That's the sine of theta one. All right, so we'll just say sine of theta one. That the sine of thirty-eight point seven equals. Let's put a little parentheses there. The sine of thirty-eight point seven equals my opposite, which is eight, divided by the value I'm trying to find is my hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, which is my z value. For we'll, start, we'll call it z one. All right, we're gonna say everything is because this is theta one, right? So we'll call that z one, z one. Okay, so z one. I'm gonna solve for z one. I gotta multiply both sides by z. All right, so that would make it z equals that. Well, it would be z times all of that, right? Equals eight. So I need to divide eight by all of that, right? To be both by divide both sides by all that, so it'd be equals z equals eight divided by the sine the sine of thirty eight point seven. Now, if you did the algebra wrong, right, it would make it, when your math is all done. Right? Does this length need to be longer or shorter than eight? Right? It needs to be longer. Right? So you need to divide this eight by a number less than one. Right? Because if you divide it by if you divide a number by greater than one, it makes the eight smaller. Right? If you divide a number by less than one, it makes the number bigger. Right? So just using some common sense makes you recognize if you did the math wrong or not. Okay, so let's do this. Let's see what the sine of 37, 38.7 is. 38.7, well, that's less than 1. All right, so that should work out. All right, so if I divide that by 8, all right, that's greater than 1. Whoops, that's not right. That's wrong. Let's do 8 divided by, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could use the inverse sign, right, and do 8 divided by, uh, never mind, that's the way to do this. Okay, so we'll just do 8 divided by 38.7 sine equals. So that, that equals 12.795. We're going to round to the nearest uh, hundredth, so tens, hundredths. So rounding the nearest hundredths would make, bump this all the way up to 12.8. Okay, so, so z equals 12.80. So z, that's z1. Z1. So what is... Uh, what is this CB here? I'm going to call this X1. Okay, X1. X1. Well, I can call that the cosine, right? So the cosine, the cosine of theta, of 
38.7 equals right adjacent over hypotenuse right my adjacent number is what I don't know divided by 12.80 I just found the hypotenuse okay so now I can say all right I could also use the tangent if I wanted to all right but I decided to use cosine <coughs> okay so um, you know tangents opposite over adjacent I could have done that right off the bat and figured out X first if I wanted to but I decided to do cosine first right using the same method okay so again I got my my well now it's the opposite here I got my unknown on top okay so now this is going to be to figure out X X is going to be so 12 point eight zero times the cosine times the cosine of thirty eight point seven degrees equals x which equals this would have been this would have been purple. Oh well. And my sign up there should have been burgundy. <laughs> Thirty-eight and seven, and then I'll make my my sign up here burgundy. You would be able to tell the difference between burgundy and purple. Maybe you would. Let's see. Yeah, and then this could have been eight. Yeah. Okay. I guess you can tell the difference a little bit. Okay, so now, now my cosine of 38.7 times x uh, equals, or my, my cosine of 38.7 times 12.8, right, is, and that makes sense, right, because my cosine of 38.7, right, is about, which is 0 0.780 and that means that my this length is about 78 percent the length of z right so I'll multiply that by 12.80 and it's about nine that's about 10 okay that means x is x is 10 yeah you can round that to, you can round that to 10 Okay, so that's how you figure out this triangle. Okay, so now to figure out, I figured out this triangle one, I guess is what this ended up being, was triangle one. And then triangle two, because it's theta two, you do the similar stuff, right? So now let's figure out triangle two using tangent. We'll figure out triangle two using tangent here. And uh, let's see. Let's go and uh, let's see. Well, all right, so all this is going to be easy. All right, this is a 45 degree angle. We don't even have to figure out one of the triangles, right? So this is a 45 degree angle. So what do we remember about the 45 degree angles? Right, this is eight. Right, so if this is eight, this is one of the legs. Remember, remember our 45 degree angles. Right, that's 45 degree angle. That's 45 degree angles. So what do we remember about the rules for our 45 degree angles? Right. Well, x. Remember our 45 degree angle rules. Right. Each one of these legs are going to be equal to each other. Right. So, x and y in a 45 degree angle, 45 degree triangles, the legs x equals y. Right. Both legs equal each other. Right. And it equals z. I should do. I should code this. Forty-five degree triangle. Let me color code this better. In a forty-five degree triangle, if theta equals forty 
five degrees. Then then x equals y Sorry, I had to pause that. My mom was asking me if I wanted breakfast. All right, so uh, visiting my parents for Christmas. So x equals y. Then, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so if it's an equilateral triangle, and I know that because, I'm um, sorry, not, it's not an equilateral. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is a 90 degrees if you don't see it, All right? 45, 45, 90 triangle, then x equals y. Um, and then, um, x, yeah, the length of x and the length of y are the same. They're equal to each other. And, and then you can remember that that um, it, that will equal, and z will equal uh, x or y, x or y times the square root of 2. Right, I'll probably do the x equals y, and then z equals, I'll just say x, x or y. x or, I'll do it in blue. x or y, because they're the same, right? times the square root the square root of 2 All right so that's the All right remember that's the rules from uh, from a couple days ago All right so if I don't have those handy from anywhere uh, I'm pause it just for a second yeah I found it right so like if you remember here, this is the, the lengths of any triangle, 45, 49, 590. The legs, this is the x or the y, times square root of 2 equals the hypotenuse, if that, if that reminds you. That's from 7.6. So anyway, so that means that the hypotenuse here is 8 times the square root of 2. All right, so if you wanted to do that in here, it's 2 times the square root times 8 is 11.3 ish approximately 11.31 yeah, 11.31 all right so that's how you figure out that one there that one's really easy 45 45 90 triangles are awesome super easy okay all right let's move on to to this one here um, so here we have two triangles overlapped on each other one's overlapped on each other and we're going to call the first one uh, triangle the big one triangle one and the little one triangle two all right and i'm gonna go ahead and highlight the hypotenuse of each we have this line rg is the hypotenuse of each of one all right i'm gonna highlight that one and i'm gonna call that z of the first one and then the second one's hypotenuse, I'm going to highlight and call it the Z. It's line RW here. I'll call it Z of the second one. Maybe make that a little bigger. Z of the second one. Okay, yeah, that works, I think. Okay, and then we have RH here. RH um, is the y value for both of them here and it is gives us the problem that rh is 12 the length of rh is 12 and then the x values are going to be green and they don't give us the x values in here at all they've already given us rh i'm going to go ahead and mark that off Okay, RH is 12, and the green values, right, are here, and the green value, oh, man, that's 
not putting down ink very well. A green value uh, for the big one. We'll call that X1. And for the small one, we'll call that X2. Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see that better now. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to go through and we're going to label. Um, we've got to find all the line measures and all the angle measures and stuff. I'm going to move that one. It's bothering me. I move that to Z. All right. So we have Z. We have Z of the, of the, angle, the second one. And, you know, one is this big one right here. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Okay. Um, all right. So <coughs> let's start figuring out which uh, angles here uh, are the are the angles of concern and what we can use. Okay, so if we wanted to figure out the length of the hypotenuse, right, um, in reference to 12 for Z, like a Z1 here, the Z is the hypotenuse, it would be opposite over hypotenuse and that's the sine. Right, so the sine, the sine of z, so the sine, so the sine of one, to, is that we're looking for angle R, G H, R, G H. Do they give us R G H? They give us R H G. That's ninety degrees. Okay, cool. Check. Do they give us R, G H? R, G, H. Yeah, they do. Awesome. We're going to call that theta 1. Cool. So we're going to call this theta 1. All right. So we're going to run with that and see what we can, what we can figure out with that. So the sine of theta, the sine of 33, 33.7 equals opposite opposite which is 12 divided by the hypotenuse of Z, Z2 or Z1 excuse me Z1 right so if I want to solve for Z1 when the variables on the bottom you just gotta swap the two Right, Z1 equals 12 divided by the sine of 33.7. Okay, so before you put it in the calculator, what should you expect qualitatively? Right, should Z1 be longer or shorter than 12? Well, it, it should be longer. Right, it's the hypotenuse. All right, so if I go 12 divided by 12 divided by 33. 12. I'm gonna try to get you guys to see the, the key punches. Maybe I can zoom out a little. All right, so 12 divided by 33.7 sine equals. Okay. Twelve divided by thirty-three point seven sine equals twenty-one point six. Okay, so twenty-one point six two six three six three equals twenty-one point six three. Okay, so that makes sense. All right. So I know now. I know that. Z1 is 21.63. I'm gonna erase Z1 just to keep my just to keep my drawing neat. Okay. So what about do I have R do I have RWH up here? Yep, they give me RWH right here. I'm gonna call this theta two. Theta two. Okay. And theta two um, is going to be, again, I can use the sine. 
sine of theta 2 is it going to be of 55 point of 50 let me zoom in so you guys can see it better the sine the sine of 50 point 2 equals 12 divided by z2 okay so I'm going to solve for z2 it's going to be equals 12 divided by oops I changed my colors 12 divided by the sine of 50.2 all right so again with my, my button pushing it's going to be 12 divided by 50.2 2 sine equals 15.6 so this equals 15.6 erase this this equals 15.6 all right so now I know that now I know the two lengths well, what about this angle here? I'm supposed to all angle measures, all right? Well, this is a this and this is equals 180 degrees. I know that this is 50.2, 50 50.2, 50 180 minus 50.2. Equals 129.8. 129.8. Right, so awesome. That's easy. Just answer the question. All right. Is that going to be useful for anything? No, but I'm just answering my question asked. Okay. All right, so what about, so if this is 129.8, well, I know that WRG, WRG, that's 16.5. They already told me that, that that was 16.5. I could figure it out that way too. But okay, so so if this is theta, so what is the measure of this angle? If this was 50.2 and that's 90 degrees, what is this angle measure? All right. So this angle measure is 90 degrees plus. Uh, 50.2 is RWH, right? It's 50.2, 50.2 equals 140 minus 180 equals 39.8 degrees. This is 39.8 degrees. Okay, so that's 39.8 degrees. We'll call that WRH. And measure of angle WRH equals 39.8 degrees. So why that doesn't matter, right? Because we need, it might be helpful to know what the measure, I'm gonna use green for this because this is the opposite. This measure here doesn't give us the measure of GRH. A measure of angle, the measure of angle G. R H is equal to 16.5 this measure 16.5 plus this measure of 39.5 so it's going to be 16.5 plus 39.8 and that's going to equal 56.3 56.3 we could also figure it out by going 90 plus this was 33.7 equals and then subtract 180 from that and it's 56.3 another way to figure that one out because that is this is we're going to call theta 
uh, three. I think it'll stay to three. All right, because this is our our third our third big triangle. Well, we don't. I mean, if we wanted to figure out what x one is. Okay, so let's figure out x one with that. Let's figure out x one. All right, so x one for our big triangle. Let's do it. So it's say it's the sine. Let's do use sine. Let's keep using sine. Uh, you know, let's use tangent. Let's use tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Right? So let's use blue. The tangent of theta, which is 56.3 of 56.3. We're using theta 3. Right? The tangent of theta 3 is opposite equals x1, right, the big one, divided by 12, adjacent, opposite, opposite over adjacent, right, so we're solving for x, now all we got to do is multiply 12, we're going to solve for x by multiplying both sides by 12, so it's going to be 12 times 56.3 equals x1. Okay, and that's going to equal. All right, so here's my question to you. All right, 56.1 is a larger angle than 33.7. Okay, so 56. So which one's going to have the longer side? All right. So when we type this in. Right, 33.7 is a smaller angle than 56.3. Theta 1 is smaller than theta 3. So the opposite angle, the opposite side length, excuse me, the opposite side length is going for theta 3 is going to be bigger than theta 1's opposite angle. So x, x1 is going to be bigger than, than, tw than 12. Right, so you should expect to see that when you type that in. Right, if it's not, you did some algebra wrong or you did something wrong. So they, that's what you should expect to see. Okay, so let's see what happens when we put that in. So the tangent, so 56.3 times, and put the tangent of that in. That's a good sign. It's like one and a half times bigger, right? Times 12 equals that's like 17. Well, it's 18, right? So 18. All right, so x1 is 18. Okay, now we can do the same thing. We can use tangent for for this one because do we know? Do we know? Can we figure out what wrh is? Yeah, we can figure out wrh is, and we can call that q4. All right, because this is 16. Point, um, this is 16.5, and we know the whole thing is 56.3. All right, so we can say 56.3 minus 16.5 equals 39.8. So we can say this is 39.8. Right. So let's do uh, the. It's going to be it's going to be the same thing except it's going to be 39.8. Right. So 12. The tangent times the tangent of thirty nine point eight equals x two. All right, so that's going to be uh, thirty nine point eight tangent times twelve equals this is ten. Isn't that nifty? I think it's nifty. That's 10. All right, so I think that gives us all the angles. We figured that out angle. We figured this angle out. We figured that angle out. We figured out that length, that length, that length, that length, that angle. Yeah, we got everything on that one. All right, so that's the power of trigonometry and these ratios. And we didn't have any use Pythagorean's theorem yet. 
So, uh, we'll leave this one to you guys. We'll see if you can figure out this one to you, for you. Um, that'll be the you try it together type of thing. Okay. The thing is isosceles triangles with these ones, it means that two of the sides are together. The base, KC, is the one that's not the same. I mean, so this one and this one are congruent. This one's not, right? And WK, where's WK? WK is not the same. These two are congruent here. This one and this one are congruent. Okay? Um, and then the rest of them are as shown. All right, so I hope you guys have fun with that one. Um, and I'm going to edit this one so that it is not 52 minutes long. Have a great day, guys.